This weekend, I got invited by SoRare to watch the Tottenham Man City game in London. I really wanted to make content around this event and hopefully any future events we get to go to, and I thought what better way than to share it as a value or no value series. Effectively, I wanted to break down all of the costs, look at the experience, the atmosphere, everything included in the trip. Maybe it helps you if you want to go on a weekend away with the boys, watch the football, or maybe you're just there for the drama, or maybe you just care about my opinion on you know what the football event was like. Whatever reason, I hope you enjoy it. I obviously do want your feedback it's a brand new series so do let me know but be slightly more generous than usual because obviously it's a new series it's the first time i've ever done anything like this so yeah there's room for improvement i know that but this is just a starting base starting off then we're flying out of jersey airport that's where i live you've got to get there by plane effectively i managed to get this flight for 18 pound it is ridiculous value shout out to easyjet for having those flights so last minute as well Got really lucky with them. Usually it's about £100 to get anywhere outside of Jersey. Um, but just looking at this takeoff, right, I know I'm biased, but I do think it is one of the most beautiful places to take off from. It's just like the scenery around it. The weather's usually pretty nice. In terms of the football then, I don't support either of the teams. So I was just hoping for some action, like lots of goals, lots of cards. But to increase my interest, I did pick up a Kevin De Bruyne rare card before the game for about £2,700. If you don't know what Sora is, you probably think I'm nuts. And you might be right, but like, check out my new starters guide I've just bought. out. It'll show you everything you need to know about So Rare. But effectively, it's just a fantasy football game where you can win real prizes. Now they partner with the Premier League. There's going to be loads of different experiences on offer to win, I'm sure. Um, and that's how I got access to the tickets today. So shout out to So Rare. I'd suggest getting involved because there's plenty of free-to-play options as well. You don't have to play £2,700 for a player. As we land in Luton then, it's only my second time visiting the airport, so I have no idea what to do or where to go. But I was pretty annoyed to find out the train station isn't actually at the airport. I mean, well, how pathetic is that? But uh, effectively, you just get a shuttle bus. It's not too bad, but £2.40. I would call it no value, but you can't really walk it anyway. So we'll get on with that. Uh, getting into London then, it was the classic train tube combination. I've got to say, I am a big train fan. You know, if you can just sit at a table on your own for a train ride, I really don't care. Just listening to music, time flies by. Um, that whole combination combination because you just tap in and tap out where you where you end up really was £13.50 which isn't bad at all I think um, and that got me in walking distance of the hotel so that wasn't bad at all we're aiming to be in like Liverpool Street area because it's well connected to Tottenham it's in a nice -ish area in London from the tube station then I was using my go-to London guide it's called City Mapper if you don't know about it and you are going to London you have to get it it's honestly the best thing ever um, but it was being a bit glitchy that day so I switched to Google Maps after walking half the way there and then effectively walked for 20 minutes so that's not bad at all got to check in and I was told I don't have a booking I knew exactly what happened. I tried to outsmart City Mapper and I got caught short. I walked to the wrong travel lodge. With my hangover and the walk of shame, I really couldn't combine the two. So I've chickened out into an Uber. It cost £9.95, which is good value but the Uber was filled with shame. Like a true English football hooligan, I got myself a roast dinner and a double vodka lemonade. £27.60 reminded me how expensive London can be, plus £6.85 for the pale ale pint. Normally awful value, but I did get to watch Celtic on the screen and charge my phone, so I'm calling it a net win. One direct train to Spurs Stadium then. I don't think I actually got charged this because I guess I'd already reached, reached the max limit for TFL for the day. Um, then I was heading to the pub to meet everyone else that was going to the game with so rare. I bumped into them actually as I was walking there. They didn't actually fancy telling anyone that they were leaving the pub. Uh, lucky for me, but poor Josh was wandering around in the boozer with a pint on his own, probably wondering if this whole trip was a stitch up. Finally then we all meet up inside the stadium, eating pizza, talking football, drinking pints, Absolutely fantastic stadium. £10.49 for the pizza is reasonable and Dan from So Rare not only got us tickets but he was also getting us pints inside the stadium so someone get that man a raise. Sounds like the perfect scenario so why am I so sad? Kevin De Bruyne is benched. Pep Guardiola the fraud has done it again. I just I knew the risk but I just couldn't actually comprehend that he would drop De Bruyne in such an important game absolutely raging. I needed about five minutes out just to deal with the pain. Walking out to see the pitch and the fans, it really showed the sheer size of this place. It looked outstanding. In terms of atmosphere, I'd probably give it like a six out of 10. Good for an English club, but you know, a stadium that size is gonna be really hard to fill with pure ultras singing the whole time. So I understand why. I would say though, the ultras and like the core hardcore fans really need some better chance. They're just too many on repeat. For myself then, no KDB is a pain. All I'm focused on now is a pure shootout between the two best goal scorers in the league, right? Haaland versus Kane. And what happens, Kane smashes one in early. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! 
breaks an all-time scoring record for Spurs. Like a great piece of history for me to watch. So fantastic with that. But more importantly, the fans were absolutely loving it. They're going mad for Kane. So that was sick to watch. Um, it was pretty much all quiet into the second half then where the global fantasy football took over. Um, AZ conceded and, well, I'll just let Josh explain. Conceded. Yeah. So I'm, I'm extremely disappointed. Sam's laughing at me. You <laughs> Because uh, I would have, you know, I'm on for a podium in the Cap 270 Super Rail, which I said I was going to do. Hang on, live alert maybe. Oh no, just the second half. I've had <laughs> Into the second half then, and finally the action I wanted. De Bruyne is coming on, and the undercover Spurs fan could last no longer. Number 17, Kevin De Bruyne. It wasn't right, but I was literally just watching one player play, really. Like, everything he was doing, I was just adding up my head. Right, dual lost, minus 0.8. Accurate long pass, plus a half. Like, all of these things, just trying to tally up and just trying to think, is there any chance he can get an assist here? He had a couple of crosses, he had a couple of um, corners and things, which I thought were great opportunities. Literally came to nothing. To be honest, the second half was completely boring. Finally, some action from Christian Romero, who just smashed someone for a second yellow card. Got to respect that from the big Argentinian, but it did leave fat Spurs fans sweating. Ultimately, though, they did manage to hold on. Good roar from the crowd towards the end, celebrating a massive victory for Spurs. They really do have City's number here. Dan from So Rare gave out a signed Spurs shirt for whoever got the correct score during the game, which was won by Josh, so it wasn't all bad for him that day. It was for me when Kevin De Bruyne finished on a 33.4 score. My spirits were lifted by a pub crawl, though, back to the Seven Sisters tube station. Obviously, I didn't record much of it because it wasn't really the time or place but it'll explain my face on screen. And in addition to that, there was a 7.30 fire alarm in my hotel. In terms of cost then, I got a drinks round for £27.60, which isn't bad for London. And this lovely little travel lodge right in the center of London was a massive bargain uh, for £45 that was. Just know if you did want to pay for Wi-Fi or early check-in, those did cost you. So I avoided them personally, but I could see why pledge for them. Possibly the best value of the trip, except maybe the free tickets from So Rare, would be the bottle of water. £2.90 may seem steep, but an absolute lifesaver on the day. Walking into Liverpool Street then, I took my first trip on the Elizabeth Line and a train to Luton. I can't find any charges for this, so the max fare must run on a 24-hour period, not a daily basis. If you do know that, let me know in the comments. Stupid stuck shuttle bus at the airport still cost £2.40, but arriving at the airport, I knew what I wanted, and I was on a one-way trip to get it. An English breakfast and a tea, walked into the pub called Big Smoke, and wow... Honestly, this was the worst breakfast I've ever had in my life. I legitimately spat out the sausages, they were that bad. I tried to argue my case to get some sort of discount, but it was a tough morning for me. Couldn't be asked for a debate, so stumped up the ridiculous £17.50. No value. Finally then, the return leg back home. Thankfully, the hangover gods were nice to me and I got off really lightly, which is always handy when flying. Uh, the flight was utter value again, £18. Honestly, if you're flying with EasyJet and you don't need more than a backpack, I really think you can get some really good value flights out of them. Um, overall then, that brings the total cost of the trip to £198.98. We just snuck in under £200. I could have probably done the trip slightly cheaper then, and probably on reflection I would have on certain things, but let's go through this right. The stadium, easily a 9 out of 10. It is just sensational, like the size of it, the complete biggest bar in Europe at the bottom, the pizzas you get in about four seconds, like genuinely unreal. Atmosphere, 6 out of 10. Like I said, English football is probably pretty good. If you're looking at like Scotland or Germany or, Ita or Italy, like they are going to outdo you for atmosphere. It's just natural when, you know, the Premier League is, is marketed to a wider audience, let's say, rather than just hardcore fans. The company I was with, 10 out of 10. Realistically, it's going to be very hard for me now to say any of the company isn't 10 out of 10, so expect that going forward. And what does that make that overall? This was an absolutely fantastic value. I'd call it a great value trip made possible by So Rare. So thank you so much to them. Thank you to Dan. Thank you to all the guys that came along. I had such a good time with you all. I hope we can do it in the future. And not to forget, Kevin De Bruyne, £2,700, no value. What's next for me then? I really hope you liked the video because that would help me a lot, but I already have my next football trip lined up. Be sure to subscribe so you can see where I go. I'll tell you, it's in the next two weeks. I'll be seeing one of my favorite players, should all things go to plan, of course. Um, get your guesses in the comments. You might just win something if you get it right. And then I'll leave it with all the best to you. Cheers.